Prophet Ibrahim السلام, was a man chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spread his message. He traveled to distant lands and preached to the local people. He was thankful to God for all the favors he had received. But the one thing that bothered him the most was the fact that he didn't have an heir. His wife Sara had grown old by now, and she had given up all hopes of giving birth to a child. She was sad for her husband, and then, one day, she came up with an idea. Sara asked Ibrahim السلام, to marry their servant, Hajar radiallahu anha. Ibrahim refused at first because he loved his wife so much. But she insisted, and finally the Prophet obliged. She then prayed to God to bless the couple with a child. Soon, Hajar radiallahu anha gave birth to a boy. The Prophet named him Ismail. The Prophet was finally happy. He was now a father. But his happiness didn't last for long. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet to do something. So, he went to Hajar and asked her to get ready. Where are we going? she asked. You will soon find out, he said. Hajar radiallahu anha trusted her husband. So, she didn't utter a word and got ready for the journey. It was a very hot day. The Prophet and his wife kept walking under the scorching sun. Hajar radiallahu anha followed her husband quietly, carrying Ismail on her shoulders. They kept walking for a long time in the desert, and most of their food and water was exhausted by now. They finally reached a valley near Al Marwa mountain. It was a piece of barren land containing no signs of life. Then, without saying any word, the Prophet started walking back. He left the mother and child alone in that barren valley. They only had a small amount of food and water with them. But that wouldn't even last for two days. Hajar hurried after him. Where are you going, leaving us all alone? She shouted. She called him again and pleaded him to come back. But the Prophet didn't even look back and he kept walking away. In spite of her cries for help, when she saw the Prophet was silent, she realized that he was not acting on his own. She realized that he must have received commands from God to act in such a way. Did Allah command you to leave us in the desert? She cried. The Prophet shook his head. Then his noble wife said, Do not worry, we are not going to be lost. Since Allah who commanded you is with us, the Prophet continued walking without looking back. In a few hours, the food and water that Hajar anha had in reserve got over. The baby soon got thirsty and started to cry. She wanted to see if there was anyone nearby, so she ran up a hill called Al Marwa. She stood there and looked around, but she saw no one. Then she ran to the next mountain, called Al Safa, hoping to find someone from there. But she couldn't find anyone from there either. Then she ran back to the top of Al Marwa, then again to Al Safa. She kept running between these mountains seven times. By the time she climbed Al Marwa for the last time, she was very tired. It was then that she heard a voice. She kept quiet and waited to hear the voice again. She heard the voice for the second time, 
and she said, Oh, whoever you might be, you have made me hear your voice. Have you got something to help me? It was then that she saw an angel. The angel was digging the earth. The angel kept digging till water flowed from it. It was a miracle. When she saw the water, she ran toward it and placed stones around to build a basin. This place where the water rose is called Zemzem. Hajar radiallahu anha didn't go anywhere else and stayed at Zemzem. Days passed and Marwa lay between a trade route between two towns. One day, a few traders were traveling through the desert. When they saw the birds flying around Al Marwa, they knew the birds were there because of the water. Hey, look, one of them said. Looks like we can find some water there. Others agreed and walked toward Al Marwa. When they arrived, they were surprised to find a woman. She was holding a baby too. Shall we stay here and use this water, please? They asked her. Hajar agreed, and they drank water from Zamzam. Many others arrived at Al Marwa, and some of them eventually settled down there. In a few years, the whole valley came alive with people from different cities living there now. Hajar and her child were not alone any longer. In the meantime, Ismail السلام, grew up. He learned Arabic from the travelers. People loved and respected him for his qualities. He kept thinking about his father, and he knew that his father will come back someday. Ismail then married a local woman and lived his life in peace. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, was missing his son very badly now. It had been years since he saw Ismail. One day, he decided to go to Mecca to meet his wife and son. He traveled through the desert and arrived at Al Marwa. The Prophet was quite surprised when he saw all the activity at Al Marwa. Last time he was here, there was not even a single soul living on this mountain. He knew it was all because of God and thanked him. He asked the local people about his wife, but they told him that Hajar had died some time ago. When the Prophet heard this, he was very sad. But then they told him about his son. Ismail was still alive. The Prophet was very happy to hear this. The news of his father's arrival reached Ismail. He ran to meet his father. When he met the old Prophet, he had tears in his eyes. He hugged his father, and he was waiting to meet him for such a long time. It was a happy time for both father and son, but the happiness didn't last for long. One day, God decided to test Ibrahim salam. One night, when the Prophet was sleeping, he saw a dream. In his dream, the Prophet saw himself killing his son as a sacrifice. When the Prophet woke up in the morning, he ignored it, thinking it was just a dream. But the next night, he saw the dream again. This time, he realized that this was not just an ordinary dream. It was Allah asking him to sacrifice his own son. The Prophet went to his son and told him about the dream. Ismail understood that it was an order from Allah. He was a man of faith and realized that he has to comply. Do what Allah has asked you to, he told his father. The next day, the Prophet took a rope and a knife and set out for Mount Arafat along with his son. Upon reaching the top of the mountain, Ismail asked his father to tie his hands and legs 
so that he may not struggle during the sacrifice. The prophet obliged and tied his hands and legs. Then he blindfolded himself so that he won't have to watch his son suffer. Then he raised his knife for the sacrifice, but suddenly he then heard a voice. The voice asked him to stop the sacrifice and told him that this was just a test. The prophet was relieved. His son was going to be alive. They hugged each other and cried tears of joy for they had just passed a difficult test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ismail alayhi salam joined his father in preaching to the people. They spoke about Allah and called people to Islam. One day, Allah ordered the Prophet to build a house for worship. The Prophet told his son that Allah had ordered him to build the Kaaba, and Ismail replied, Do what your God has ordered you to do. They soon started building the foundation of the Kaaba. Ismail alayhi salam helped by carrying the stones, while Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam built the house. When the walls got tall, Ibrahim alayhi salam could not reach the top. So Ismail alayhi salam brought a large stone for the Prophet to stand on. This stone was called Maqam Ibrahim and can still be seen today. The foundation was soon completed, but there was a gap left in the corner. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked his son to find a stone to fill in the corner. I feel tired, he said to his father. But when the old prophet insisted, Ismail went searching for a stone. When he left, Ibrahim sat there waiting for the stone. But then a miracle happened. An angel flew down from heaven carrying a stone. The angel told him that the stone was brought to earth by Adam alayhi salam from paradise. The stone was originally white, but because of the sins committed by people on earth, its color gradually turned into black. Ismail returned after some time, and when he saw the stone, he was surprised and asked his father where it came from. It was brought by someone who never gets tired, replied Ibrahim. They had hardly, they had finally finished building the Kaaba. They prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their work. Allah was very happy with the Prophet and his son for spreading his message and proclaimed the pilgrimage among men. They will come to thee on foot and on every kind of camel. Lean an account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways. Prophet Ismail alayhi salam lived for a very long time. He was 137 years old when he died. Did you like the stories, friends? <laughs>